Hey, hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Five Stripe Weekly Live. Gonna let you guys join in and remember to leave your comments below. But this is uh, Five Stripe Weekly Live, and we're gonna talk about the match on Wednesday, and we're going to preview the match on Sunday. But, uh, yeah, remember to leave your comments in the section below. I'm going to pin this just so that we can save that. If I can figure out how to, how to pin it. Uh, maybe not, maybe not. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we're going to be joined by uh, our friend Devin in a second. And also uh, Tanner, of course. So... Uh, we're just going to get into some of the news that happened uh, over the past week as well. Uh, of course, we heard about the uh, the Home Depot backyard. Uh, it's progressing, and uh, you all have seen the uh, the soccer ball statue that uh, that looks awesome, and uh, can't wait to to get that going. But um, yeah, remember to leave your questions in the comment section below, and uh, you know, in your your opinions about the match about. Uh, what happened? About what happened on Wednesday, of course. Wasn't the best result, but, uh, you know, was uh, just very unfortunate. But, um, yeah, also, uh, we heard about the, the links to the Mexican side, uh, Club America. That was, uh, whew, um, you know, it's a big, big squad and our big, big team in uh, Liga MX. But, um, yeah, they... Uh, Tata Martino definitely just refuted that almost immediately and said that uh, Joseph Martinez and Miggy are likely not even going anywhere this year. But, uh, yeah. Um, just going to wait for uh, Devin to request to join, and, uh, and we'll get started on our recap of uh, the, match on, uh, the match on Wednesday. But... Just really, uh, again, unfortunate result there. But, um, you know, okay, so we got uh, Niall Faruqi. He said, uh, I thought the U.S. Open match was disappointing. I thought the selection lineup was off. Definitely agree. It's not the, uh, not the best uh, result there, obviously. And, uh, yeah, selection uh, pretty awful. Um, here we go. So, <laughs> so apologies uh, for any of the uh, technical difficulties. Hey, we up, uh, have the wrong person joined, but hey, how are you doing, man? Doing good. What's up, bro? <laughs> hey, man, how are you doing? Thanks, thanks for uh, thanks for getting on. Uh, this is not Devin, but uh, how are you doing? What you have a question? No, did you hear Arsenal offered from Miguel Almiron yesterday? Uh, that. Probably isn't true, but uh, we'll uh, we'll look into those reports. But uh, yeah, I mean it's it's one of those. He's been linked with uh, you know before, uh, you know whether that's actually true. I don't think he can actually uh, you know make one of those uh, kind of top six clubs in the PL right now. So unfortunately, I don't I don't think quite quite so. But um, here we go. All right, we're gonna get Devin on. Here we go. All right. But, uh, yeah. What's up to the, what's up to the kid, uh, Joseph Samuel for joining? Uh, appreciate that. What's up, man? And, uh, welcome, Devin. Uh, I can't really hear you right now, but, uh, hopefully we'll work out that issue. Uh, try again. Come back. Okay. Again, apologies for the uh, the mishaps. This is always uh, the problem with going live. But, um, yeah, so uh, I'll just kind of talk about the, the game a little bit before uh, Devin comes back on. But, yeah, I mean, it's a, uh, you know, it's a 1-0 loss that, uh, I mean, I think it's a little closer than people realized. Uh, I mean, essentially we played against a first-choice Chicago Fire and that's obviously very, very difficult when uh, we rotate very heavily. So, you know, uh, 
you know, with the, the lineup choices, it seemed like Tata didn't really have any, uh, any remorse. Like, he went with uh, the players he went with because he felt like he wanted uh, this competition to give uh, the, the guys that, you know, are a little bit on the fringe a little bit more playing time. So, completely makes sense, but it's, uh, you know, it's such a shame. But, um, all right. We're going to add Devin again. We'll see what happens. Here we go. See if the the audio will work this time. But, um, yeah, the uh, the four two three one definitely prevailed again. And we'll see if Devin can, uh, oh, no. Uh, it's all right. Yeah. Well, uh. Just type it in, but, uh, yeah. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, you know, this stuff happens. But uh, I'll talk through uh, the Chicago Fire match, and then we'll be joined by Tanner for the preview. So, again, leave your questions below. But, um, yeah. So, yeah, Niall Faruqi, he says, uh, it's it makes sense to have the youth, but not against Chicago's best 11. I think, uh, I mean, of course, in hindsight, that's, uh, that's always uh, easier to say when... I mean, the, the lineups are pretty much, they're put out at the same time, you know, and it's not like Tata, uh, well, he did predict that they probably would uh, put out their best, but I think he is just going to go with what he treats this, uh, he treats this uh, competition as. I mean, he basically thought it uh, is great uh, playing time for our our fringe guys, and so, I mean, I don't think he set out to lose this this match at all or anything like that. I mean, it's uh, we'll, we'll let uh, Devin join again. Here we go. Let's hope it works. Viewers are dropping fast. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. I, I thought I heard you, but now I can't. Oh, no. <laughs> this is just a comedy of errors. All right, it's uh, not to be, not to be, but uh, Devin might just have to leave some uh, some comments. But um, Thrasher's tribute says that we should have started Hildebrandt. Uh, I don't think the the goal was Can's fault. So really, it was nothing we could have done about it. I mean, uh, there was some defensive lapses in the uh, – in the midfield, in the back line before the goal, I mean, it was pretty much he bailed us out a bunch of times uh, with some very good saves, in my opinion. Uh, and, you know, their goal was well worked. It was uh, a through ball that just sliced us open, uh, immaculate cross, and Nikolic, you know, he's just so clinical that he's going to score from wherever he is. And um, so it was just unstoppable. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think, uh, you know, with our other players that started, um, you know, we have Miggy that uh, definitely was, uh, you know, he's the person that uh, was relied on to be our driving force. And, uh, yes, <laughs> Hunter Ramos, uh, yes, we at least we are Argentina. Um, yeah, I mean, and I think that, that serves as a big example of the biggest teams in the world uh, all have these type of, all these have these type of things happen to them. You know, it's, uh, it's going to happen where, uh, you know, teams drop out of competitions. And no matter how big you are, I think it shows the parity in MLS that, uh, you know, the margins are very, very small. But, um, you know, we, uh, we put out the best lineup that we could, I think, for the rotation, even though I think, yeah, I mean, should we have started a little bit more uh, of the, the first choice guys? Uh, maybe a Nagmi, maybe a Larry, maybe so, uh, because I think people, the, the reactions are, are very, very harsh, of course, with the, uh, the, I think people are forgetting that we only had five internationals that we could choose from. And so only five internationals, that means, you know, it's, uh, it's very, very tough to actually, uh, one, the math is difficult, and then you got to, uh, you know, get the, the selection right. And I think we all agree I think Andrew Carlton should have started. I mean, and shout out to Andrew Carlton. It's his birthday today, so happy birthday to the boy. Um, but, you know, uh, I think we needed a little bit more creativity uh, 
Because, yeah, I mean, we had the, uh, the strikers already in with Romario Williams, with Tito Vijalba. Uh, it was, you know, we had those guys, but we only had essentially one creator and maybe, uh, you know, I think with two creators in the squad, it would have really helped. But, uh, you know, uh, I agree. It's, uh, we didn't see much from Vasquez. I think with the injury earlier in the year, it's just been an off type of uh, year for him, especially how well he did last year. He was, uh, you know, a great super sub. He, like, every time he came on, it seemed like he would, uh, you know, tack on uh, an extra goal or uh, help us in the buildup of a, an, another goal. So it's just very, very tough. Um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write any of these players off after one match. So I think it's a harsh, uh, you know, a harsh thing to say. But uh, did they do themselves any favors with this match? I mean, basically, Tata gave them the chance to really show something, and unfortunately, it wasn't exactly uh, the best showing from everybody. I think pretty much everybody didn't have their their best match. I mean, uh, I think you know we we saw that. Um, you know, Tito Vijalba was uh, getting a lot of chances, so that's great. Um, yeah, now for Rookie, yeah, definitely the goal that uh, Vasquez scored against Real Salt Lake last season was as a sub, really, really great from him. Uh, and that was like his first uh, appearance with us. So it's something I think maybe an injury is lingering and he's just not in top form. So it's just very, very tough. And yeah, Hunter Ramos, uh, uh, he says, we are lacking goal scorers. Joseph is our only reliable one, at least this season. Uh, I, I think, yeah, definitely from the run of play, it seems like it's been tough for us to uh, put the goals in the back of the net. I mean, it's just, uh, it's very, very um, difficult for, for whatever reason, even though we, uh, we are uh, near the top of the, the leaderboards with, uh, with goals. I mean, it's just, um, you know, we we win some penalties, of course, but uh, we're we're still scoring at a very very good rate. So I think it's not uh, anything to be worried about. I, I think our players will come good, uh, and I think also we haven't had uh, Tio Vijalba for a lot of the season. He's been in and out of the squad with the injuries, and so uh, he's a guy who had double digit goals and assists last year. That that was a big factor. But um, yeah, I mean. Obviously, uh, you know, Barco came on and Carlton came on later in the match um, when I also feel like maybe Tata could have made some of the subs slightly earlier, uh, Carlton especially, but um, it seemed like it was uh, just a little too little too late where uh, the, the flow of the game was just, you know, out of our hands. They, they basically, the fire parked the bus completely and, uh, you know, we just couldn't break them down. I mean... I think uh, a big miss for us was a uh, Darlington Nagby type of player who uh, could really hold on to the possession and really slice through with the final ball. But, um, yeah, now Faruqi says, hopefully Vijalba scores against Portland on Sunday with the fans behind his back. Yeah, absolutely. I would love to see that. Uh, which, uh, yeah, let's getting into about that time. We will uh, have Tanner McLeod join us for the Portland preview. But uh, remember to keep leaving your questions below and we'll answer them to our best of our ability. But uh, what's up, Tanner? How are you doing? Oh, no, I can't hear you either. Maybe it's something with uh, my audio. I'm not really sure, but uh, let me let me check something. Uh... Okay, try that again. You can't. All right. Okay. Well, this will be a uh, solo dolo uh, AJ video, but uh, <laughs> but um, hey, it's Tanner. Yep. And bye, Tanner. But uh, yeah. Thank you guys again for joining us uh, or joining me, because well, you know, uh, technical difficulties are crazy. But we'll continue. Uh, so. Essentially, uh, we'll move on, on to the uh, the league match, and uh, that's really our focus now is uh, to you know win you know win the league and get really far in the MLS Cup. 
uh, and maybe uh, the you know maybe win the entire thing. I think uh, our expectations are sky high, of course, but uh, you know what can you do? What can you do? But um, yeah, so getting into the match on Sunday, uh, it's going to be at Mercedes Benz again. It's going to be an early kickoff at four thirty. Um, and it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a tough one. I, I think, uh, the Portland Timbers are always a dangerous squad. They, uh, yeah, they, uh, have, uh, played well and better in previous seasons, but you know, it's not terrible, but they're, uh, they're sixth in the West with 22 points. And of course we're top of the East with 33 and, um, you know, on top of the supporter shield as well. Uh, and their previous matches, they've uh, won. Uh, yeah, they won in the uh, the U.S. Open Cup against LA Galaxy last Friday. They uh, they've drawn their last two matches, and um, it's all I think due to a change of their uh, formation. They went on a uh, six game winning streak, and uh, but uh, they have obviously yeah drawn the last two games. But uh, you know they. Uh, we played them last year. It was a, a Julian Gressel goal, his first career MLS goal. Uh, but uh, I think it's a different aspect this year. Uh, playing at the Benz, it's going to be way different, way more raucous, and uh, way tougher of a um, of an assignment for Portland Timbers. But okay, we're going to try one more time with Tanner. Here we go. See if it's going to work. Again, apologies, guys. This is just uh, the nature of doing things live. But uh, thanks for hanging in with us. Okay, I think I hear a little bit of Tanner. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, Technology. Hooray. Technology. All right. Here we go. But uh, all right. So welcome, Tanner. And uh, yeah, we're going to get just right into the, uh, the danger men who we feel like uh, we should really look out for against Portland Timbers. What do you think? Well, it's definitely Diego Valeri off the get-go. You know that he's their best player by far. He's incredibly talented, MVP last season. He's a class player. He's been with them for a long, long time. He's a type of player that can create goals for others and also score them himself. And I think he's going to be the real danger man that we have to pay attention to come Sunday. Because I think Portland will follow the same game plan that teams have been following, you know, pretty much all season. They're going to sit in deep, they're going to be organized, and they're going to try to break very quickly. Atlanta's going to have to, you know, make sure they stay focused and not lose their positioning and their tactical discipline when we have the ball. Because if you do, you have guys like Valeri who could absolutely punish you, and they win. Yeah. And that's really what kind of has me concerned going into this match is because I think Portland have players that can hurt us, and Atlanta haven't been great at home. So I'd say Valeri for sure is the guy we definitely have to keep all eyes on all the time. Right, and uh, Valeri and Sebastian Blanco, uh, yeah, they're definitely, um, you know, they almost are identical with their goals and assists. They have, uh, you know, Valeri has six goals, three assists. Blanco has five goals, three assists. And uh, beyond that, with the last season's match, like we were there and we had 70% possession there as well. So they're definitely a smash and grab type of team. And Valeri, uh, he only needs even just a half chance, and he'll put it in the back of the net. So he's so dangerous, uh, and we don't want to give him that type of uh, time and space. So I think uh, our lineup uh, prediction of uh, who starts, I think, will be pretty important here. But, um, yeah, in, getting into the, uh, the injury report, uh, one of the guys who, uh, the guy who scored last year, Liam Ridgewell, uh, is just getting healthy, so uh, he, we'll have to look out for him uh, against us this year again. Uh, and yeah, I mean, uh, he's uh, he's a danger man, and Julio Cascante, and uh, you know, there's other guys that are just getting fit and just uh, getting ready. I think everybody's we're we're everybody's like litmus test. Like everybody's just getting you know healthy to to be able to play us. I think the other thing about Portland is, I mean, they might not have the most points and they struggled to, you know, to begin the season, but they're a team that always ends up there or thereabouts in the West. You know, they won an MLS Cup within the last five years. They're a solid side. They have a new manager, obviously, losing Caleb Porter after last season, but, you know, this team is going to be dangerous. They have players who are veterans who know the business. They know how to get a result in MLS. And I think right now the biggest issue Atlanta United will face is getting frustrated very quickly with themselves and with the opposition. 
And I think when they do that, that's when they, they lose their, their discipline and that's when we surrender goals, which is why they've been struggling so much at home. It's that plus the lack of a, an incisive pass. I think a lot of the time what we're seeing is we're taking two, three, four touches when we have the ball the whole time. In order to score a goal against a team that plays very compact, you have to move the ball quick, which is why a guy like Darlington Nagby, which will be his first game against his former club, this is a big game for him. I mean, he is so key, and he's one of the reasons why I think Atlanta United struggled to break down Chicago over the week is because he's the type of guy that you said earlier can play that killer ball even when it's not even on. He can just see it and play it. But also, he's a guy that can dictate the tempo from midfield, help move that ball side to side quickly, one, two touch passing. And with players, like with the players that Atlanta have, they should be able to hold that pace. They should be able to keep the ball moving fast enough to where they can create those chances. And if not, you know, that, that's, that's where you really have to think about what they're doing tactically. And I really, I, I'm concerned about Portland this week. I mean, we'll get into the predictions on that later, but, you know, the home form has been terrible. But I just I haven't really seen anything from them that shows me they can break down a team that plays and sits deep. I think the reason they've been so successful on the road is because teams attack them. Mm-hmm. Last year, Portland didn't attack them even at home, which was a bit crazy because I still think Portland's a good side. It's just a very – it's not the game that I want right now because they're a good team. And honestly, I really don't think United can afford to drop another game at home with a really big match against a really big rival coming up next week who you know they are going to want to steal all three points as well. So – I think this is a game that if they can get a result, it can really help them put a marker down and maybe get that home form going again to where it becomes a, a you know an impregnable fortress that it was last year. Yeah, and I think definitely we're we're seeing some of the the fans are uh, very upset with the uh, the U.S. Open Cup match and the results. Um, and so I think doing well on Sunday is very very key to kind of uh, get the fans back on track. Uh, but I, I almost feel like, yeah, Portland is going to be a tougher match than Orlando City because of that, because of what you're saying, um, because of how, uh, how deep they'll sit, and then that they don't really have to come out if they don't want to. I think they're playing for the draw on Sunday. Uh, they're not going to you know, try to uh, really get more than that unless you know, they just smash and grab it. But Orlando City, because of uh, the fact that you know, they want three points over us for the first time. Um, you know, I think it'll be a little easier because it'll be a little bit more open. Yeah, and I think, you know, Atlanta United fans are going to have to get used to this. They're the best team in the league. They have the most talent in the league. That happens against every team in the world where people will just come to their team, play for a draw, sit, park the bus, play compact, and hopefully nick a result. It happens everywhere. It happens in Real Madrid, Barcelona, Man United City, everyone. It happens to the best of them. What they do, though, is that they create those chances. And we've talked about, you know, last year, this year, everything. If Atlanta United score first at home, the game is wide open. If Atlanta can get one, they can get five. But if the other team scores first and Atlanta go a goal down, that's shown to be a very, very large problem for this team. And unless we're playing a team, you know, like an NYCF, NYCFC, who's really good, who will attack us and be bold like that, you know, it, they, they need to learn how to break a team down. And this team is still very young. It's still only June, thankfully. But they need to learn how to do this because this is the task they're going to be faced every single time unless a team is arrogant or stupid enough, see Orlando, to attack them at home. So mm-hmm. the fans are going to have to get used to teams doing this. It's not always going to be pretty. But I think it's our job as fans to support the team the whole way through and to make sure that we're backing them to give them that support, knowing that it's them and 45,000 people versus eleven. So, you know, that's our job. Even when the match is dull, even when we're struggling, we have to support them. And I get that that can be hard, but, you know, I think fans right now are learning about how, it, about how soccer works sometimes because, you know, we really had a great season last year, especially at home. We're going to have to learn that there's going to be frustrating times. We're going to lose cup games at home. It's going to happen. We're going to lose other games at home. It's going to happen. We just have to get used to that and stick behind the team the whole time and just push them and maybe – Maybe if we're loud enough, then the other team will just, you know, collapse. And we've seen that happen before with, you know, against LAFC. They collapsed, you know. It it, it can happen. So we just have to stay patient, trust in the process, trust Tata, trust these players. They're good. They're going to figure it out and just hope that we get to where we want to get to. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Now Faruqi says, uh, as soon as Atlanta scores, they get immediate confidence. I agree. I mean, um, it's just like – uh, it's a world of difference when uh, you know we have the 
the freedom to play after that because uh, you know that the other team is either going to come out and try to uh, to you know try to tie it, or uh, you know they might sit back even further, and then in which case we uh, we can um, you know uh, kind of press our our, uh, our offense even further. But uh, I think that that leads us into our formation, and that uh, we'll see our uh, you know league leading score probably at the top. But uh, yeah, so. I think uh, it's going to be a, a going from the top down. I think it's going to be a Joseph Martinez uh, starting. I think he'll definitely be wearing a mask this uh, this game and probably for I would say about a month. I mean, it's going to be interesting seeing what he's going to go with a clear one, a black one, uh, something that wraps around his head. We'll see. I hope he goes the black one looks like Batman. That'd be yeah awesome. for sure. I think a lot of people are clamoring for that that look. But um, and uh, I think it's going to be across our attacking midfield. I think it's going to be Barco, Almiron, um, and I think it's going to be a Julian Gressel because I think uh, essentially Tata Martino has said that uh, Tito Vijalba is kind of sitting just outside of the starting eleven at the moment, and that he will uh, probably join him. All right, he'll probably get into the eleven. Uh, you know, either. Through unfortunately, if there's an injury or if there's uh, just a, a different type of matchup, but uh, what do you? Th- well, I think to go on with that before you continue is Julian Gressel has played so well this season. He hasn't deserved to get dropped. His delivery on crosses has been fantastic, and he's worked really, really, really hard. Mm-hmm. And he offers you, you know, a lot defensively playing from that, you know, that right attacking midfield spot. Right. I'd love to see an experiment where we play him at right back against a team where we can definitely beat them at home. Yeah. Um, I think it's a very bold idea, but I think we could do it. That being said, I, I agree. I still think Tito's not fully match fit. He didn't look fully fit against uh, Chicago in the U.S. Open Cup. He looked, you know, exhausted from the, the middle of the first half on. Right. But he offers you something very much different to what Julian Gressel. He's a lot more direct. He's a lot more of a goal-scoring threat than Julian Gressel is. He also offers you that pace that no one can right. match. So he's definitely a guy who can bring on if the game's a bit stretched. But at the same time, especially at home, you know, it's rare unless Atlanta are up that the game will be stretched, which is why I think he's much better of a sub on the road, like you saw against Columbus, than he could be at home. So personally, I would have probably started with Tito and then brought Gressel on because Gressel might offer you the ability to break down a play with a great cross later in the game when the team's sitting deep, whereas a guy like Tito, who is more of a direct, pacey guy, might not give you the same. That being said, you know, I imagine that Tata did not take that match lightly on Wednesday, and he's going to have these these guys ready to come out on Sunday. So, you know, we're definitely going to see that best 11, which, you know, I'll let you get back to right now. Yeah, absolutely. And um, so uh, I think, uh, you know, midfield, obviously it's the the rock solid, uh, you know, Nagby and Larry. Um, And I think uh, it's going to be, you know, if Chris McCann uh, is healthy, I mean, obviously against a team that, uh, is a little bit more offensive. I think he plays, but I think it's in Mikey Ambrose uh, at left back this time. And uh, if you're following along, essentially, I think it's probably going to be a four-two-three-one. But uh, LGP, who was a uh, you know first-time captain uh, on the uh, Wednesday match, uh, he definitely wasn't too happy after the match. Uh, you know, getting the uh, the golden spike. He, yeah, I mean, with good reason. It's uh, you know just. Uh, not not the best result there, uh, and I think Parky comes back in. Even though Robinson has shown really really good stuff, I think it's just really hard to unseat Parky, especially if he's the the captain. There's no chance. Um, and uh, I think it's Escobar right back. Um, I think he just offers so much more going forward than any of our other right backs at the moment. And uh, Guzan between the six, what do you think? Yeah, I, I'm I'm on board with you 100 percent with that lineup. I mean. I, I really – I'm excited to see what Nagby does, how he handles the occasion playing against his former team. Um, I see, you know, uh, we have here in the comments someone saying we wish he could get his, his first goal against his former club. That would be awesome. Um, you know, I think that that's, that's the strongest level we have right now. And, you know, hopefully Joseph isn't limited by, by the mask and by his broken nose. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, that's about as strong as it can get. I, I will say that I do feel confident in Robinson and Wheeler Amadou playing mm-hmm. and getting matches in MLS after Wednesday. They both played well and did their jobs Agreed. well, um, which is nice because it shows that we do have the depth here at the club. But that's definitely the 11 I would go with. And, you know, going off that, getting into our predictions, what, what, what are you thinking for this match? Yeah, I think um, it's, you know, just our, our goal-scoring form uh, at home has been kind of dry at the moment. Uh, and it's been very strange. And, 
it's because of how uh, how deep teams sit. Uh, so I think it's going to be a two one. Um, I think it's going to be probably pretty close for most of the game, and I think maybe Tito comes on later and grabs a winner for us. Uh, I think two one. What about you? For me, uh, honestly, I I feel like I've missed every single prediction I've had so far this season. And every time I thought we would win, we lose. And every time I think we lose, we win. Yeah. So part of me is just tempted to just say we're going to lose just because maybe we'll win and I'm superstitious. Yeah. Um, for me, though, uh, I, was, I, I did feel in my gut that, you know, I think that Portland could get a result here. But I don't think United lose this game, but I don't think they're going to win either. So I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. I think Atlanta United will get a goal. If that goal comes first, then maybe they can get that result. But with how they've been playing at home right now, I, I see nothing that's changing. And I don't know, but I'm, I'm going to go with a 1-1 draw. Okay, okay. Uh, let's see what people in the uh, comments are saying. Now Faruqi says 3-2 very apprehensively uh, with a question mark. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, that would be a lot of goals. I, I would, Yeah, I would welcome that. I mean, I think I would welcome we that. haven't seen a lot of goals at uh, Mercedes-Benz lately, and uh, that would be – you know, a lot more fun than, uh, you know, one nil or, you know, that type of stuff. But, um, yeah, I think, uh, okay. Carson ATL Hawks 26, uh, asks a, a very, uh, hornet's nest of a question. And I'm not sure that we'll get into it, uh, too much in this. Uh, but he, he said that basically, uh, what does MLS need to do to get up to par with the European leagues, would relegation alone help or cap space? Just, it's uh, we won't get into too much, but I think essentially, rele- uh, promotion relegation for me uh, is a ways away, uh, and because of the just the the system that is in place in America, uh, USL NASL is just not strong enough to be able to make that happen. And str- by strong enough, I think it's money wise, and so. Uh, just quickly, yeah. I think to get into that, I think for me right now, the reason I'd love to see it one day because I think it's it's how it's how football should work. The problem right now is is you can't go to an MLS owner who just paid three hundred and fifty million dollars for an expansion fee and say, "Hey, if your thing doesn't go right, you're going to get relegated to USL and have to play in front of nobody and get no TV money." There's not enough money in the sport right now yeah. for them to be able to have. Oh wow, Nigeria just scored to make it two 0 wow. How about that? Anyway, um. Anyway, um, I just don't think it's financially a viable option for the league right now. You know, hopefully it'll continue to grow. And maybe by, you know, the 2026 World Cup, assuming everything works out and it does come here, that could do a lot for the sport here in America. And I think in in the eight-year period between now and then, the sport will continue to grow because MLS is growing. You see teams like Atlanta, you see teams like Cincinnati. You know, hopefully a team like Nashville can have a really strong fan base when they come into the league. Miami may be joining. So you're getting these good teams in these in these big markets, and if that continues to happen and, and the, you know the fan base continues to grow, then the money going into the sport will continue to grow. And I think then maybe we could see some changes, but right now I still think it's a long way off. Yeah, I agree. Um, back to the score lines. Uh, Kalen Finch says one one, like you, Tanner. Uh, Ella Bell zero zero six says three one. I would welcome that, of course. Uh, Nichols Sat Knight says 3-1. Gressel starts for me. I agree. Uh, let's see. And uh, other people are saying, yeah, I mean, okay, so yeah, Driddle Me This says, uh, popularity is the only way. Owners don't want to flood the league with money. I'm not even sure they want to be on par with the European leagues. TV contracts and stadium money are the only way. Uh, I mean, they're definitely part of the equation. But, uh, yeah, it's just... Again, uh, that's a hornet's nest, and uh, we won't get too crazy into it. Uh, Carson ATL Hawks says 2-1. Yeah, so I think uh, everyone's kind of uh, mostly on par that there's going to be a lot of goals. Uh, hopefully it won't be like a nil-nil draw. That will be kind of drab. I, I feel like uh, the uh, the fan base will really already uh, – that's already – some of the toxic corners might be, get a little louder. But uh, what do you think? I don't, I don't, dude, I'm just, I'm ready for just Atlanta United to just click. I, I don't know what's going on, and I've just been so frustrated watching this team all season that just, it's hard to explain. Like, I don't, I don't think the expectations for this team are too high, mm-hmm. but like, it's, it's just, 
kind of confusing why this team hasn't clicked yet and why they haven't been able to put these goals away because the talent level is there. And who knows, maybe this, maybe it's not Portland. Maybe it's the Orlando match that just gets them going because I think Orlando is going to be dumb enough to come in and attack us, and I think there's going to be a lot of goals like last season. I don't know what it's going to take, but at some point in time, this team will gel. And I'm just, whenever it does, it's going to be dangerous for the rest of the league, and I'd just rather that happen sooner than later. And if it's this Sunday, if it's the next Sunday, as long as they get it going by the end of the season, I, I, that's what really matters. I gotcha, gotcha, yeah. Uh... I just, uh, there's one more question. This is just for fun, uh, from a viewer. Uh, he asked, uh, through a DM, uh, ADS25. He asked, uh, next big name signing you think could possibly make a move to Atlanta? Just for fun. Any name. I know, it's hard. I have no it's idea. Not, it's not really, I have no idea. Really, the Atlanta United. The thing with Atlanta United is. Yeah. I think the biggest issue with Atlanta is we, we don't follow the model of looking for a big-name signing. We go for these young guys with high potential that have high resale value that Atlanta United can move on for more than what they paid. So by big names, I, I don't think really there's any for us to look for because it's just, it's just not what the club are looking for when they come to sign somebody. I mean, you saw how, with how things happened with Mbia, you know, earlier this season where we were interested definitely. I think he was interested as well, but – he wanted too much money, and it didn't really fit into the system that we wanted to play. And, you know, I, I think that Atlanta United are trying to change the way the league is working and the fact that they realize it's a selling league. It's not a destination league. So most of the time I think what we're going to be seeing is these young players with high potential that maybe we haven't heard of before that come in here and do things. I mean, who really heard of Ezekiel Barco before he was being linked to Atlanta right. United? Who really heard of Miguel Almiron before he was linked to Atlanta mm -hmm. United? Joseph Martinez was struggling to play with Torino in Serie A. These are players that we're not used to seeing or we're not used to hearing. So big name signing, I, I don't think that that's necessarily the way that Atlanta United seek to, to do their business. So I wish I could give you an answer, but unfortunately, I, I have no idea. Yeah, I agree. It's uh, it's just it's the the nature of how we do things, and we're we're making stars. We're not uh, you know, bringing stars over per se like that. So. Um, I think, I mean, the, the, maybe the, the, you know, the biggest name that we brought over in terms of the optics, uh, would be a Brad Guzan. I mean, it's like people have heard of him, uh, you know, was he a star in PL? Probably not, but I mean, uh, he's definitely, you know, uh, he's being voted in by our, uh, you know, our fans to the all-star game for sure. So we're making him a star as well a little bit, um, but he's always, of course, been a you know a great U.S. Men's uh, National Team uh, player, and so uh, you know I think uh, I think that's it, guys. Thank you guys so much for uh, for coming on here and uh, hanging out with us, Tanner. Thank you for joining me, and uh, we'll do uh, another one next time. And uh, hope everybody has a fantastic day. Hey.